Many European powers took a role in the scramble for Africa and came away with sizeable amounts of land. The French and the British got the lion's share, whilst Portugal, Spain, Germany and Italy were also represented. One nation whose position as an imperial power might seem slightly out of place though, that of Belgium. Belgium was not at this point, nor had it ever been, a great imperial power. At the end of the 19th century, it had a population of about 6.5 million people, which compared to the other nations who grabbed chunks of Africa, wasn't very much. Belgium's army was much smaller than its neighbours, and its navy consisted of exactly zero warships. This raises the question, how did Belgium gain an empire and one so rich in resources at that? Surely the competing powers of Europe would have wanted its territory for themselves, and there wasn't much Belgium could have done about it anyway, right? Well, in order to answer the question, we unsurprisingly need to look at the scramble for Africa itself and why the nations of Europe decided to divide it up the way that they did. So, the scramble for Africa was supposed to divvy up the continent amongst the European powers in order to prevent conflict with each other. In the end, it was divided up like this and Belgium was given access to this land known as the Congo. Well, sort of. What had actually happened was that all of the European powers had wanted the Congo, because money. The problem was that none of them could agree on who would get it, which made conflict more likely. Enter King Leopold II of Belgium, who had a wonderful idea. I'll have it. And strangely enough, nations like Germany, France and Britain agreed that he could have it. He. Not Belgium. He. As in the Congo was now the personal property of Leopold. He was granted it under the condition that trade of its natural resources, mostly rubber, would be open to all nations. That way everyone could gain some of the resources there and it would be under the administration of a king whose nation was constitutionally bound to be permanently neutral. Leopold also convinced the European powers that he would do everything in his power to Christianise the Congo, end the slave trade in the region and better the lives of the people there. Instead of doing that, it created a place in which if the Congolese failed to meet their rubber production quotas, the punishment was death or sometimes mutilation. The reason I mention this is that Leopold's poor treatment of the Congolese would go on to become a problem for him and threaten his ownership of the colony. So all of this explains how Leopold gained an empire, but not Belgium itself. The aforementioned terrible treatment of the natives led to an immense amount of international criticism, mostly from the United States and Britain. As such, in 1908, the Belgian parliament opted to annex the Congo on behalf of Belgium itself. This upset Leopold, but he wouldn't have to be upset for long since the next year he came down with a case of the deads. So now Belgium owned the Congo. Simple, right? Well, no. The first thing that Belgium did after annexing the colony was to close down trade whilst reforms were undertaken, which shockingly upset the British. As such, Britain refused to acknowledge the annexation, and many in Belgium were concerned that Britain was going to try and seize some of the Congo for itself, which is only partially true. Britain didn't want it all, but there were discussions about either taking or forcibly purchasing these lands. To make the Belgians much more nervous, the 1911 Agadir crisis kicked off, which saw Germany demand some sort of compensation for the French annexation of Morocco. France gave Germany this land in Central Africa and both agreed that maybe the borders there weren't exactly set in stone. It looked like Belgium's empire was to be short-lived until they did something very clever. It started to flirt with Germany. And for Britain and France this would be a disaster. Because in the event of war it could lead to Belgium letting German troops through into France and wouldn't give Britain the leeway to intervene. As such Britain folded and in June 1913 they recognised the annexation of Congo and Belgium's interest thereafter lay with France and Britain. Belgium would get to keep its empire. I hope you enjoyed this episode and thank you for watching with extra thanks to my patrons that you see on screen now. And a special thanks to James Bizanet, Azarka Flash, Mark H, Party Boyko, David Archaeologist, Rob Waterhouse, Chris Wicker, Michael Reynolds, Gustav Swan, Onion Duck, David Silverman, Paul, Maggie Pakskowski, Winston Kaywood, Vasily Aravidis, Christian Cheke, Anthony Beckett, Sky Chappelle, Adam Harvey and Ike.